Hey guys, this tutorial is about smoothing skin tone and brightening up eyes. You can also brighten up your teeth and you also can apply this same concept to like add makeup to your face or change your hair color or all kinds of things. We're also gonna go over like the spot healing brush to hide blemishes. So here we go. Open up your portrait and do file save as and save it as your name, skin edit and your block. And if you're doing more than one of these, make sure you add the number to that. Um, so over here on our layer panels, we have background layer where first thing we want to do is change this to a regular layer by double clicking it. So double click, click OK, and now we have layer zero. We want to convert this to a smart object. So we're going to two finger tap or right click on the right side of the layer and go to convert to smart object. Now we can tell it's a smart object because it has this little icon in the bottom of the thumbnail image. Now we're going to make two duplicates of this layer by clicking it and dragging it to the little post-it note. So there's one and two. These top two layers we're going to put in a group. So we are going to hold down shift and select the bottom one. So they're both selected and then I'm going to click this little file folder right here. And if you hold it down, it says create new group. So I'm going to click it and it puts it into a group. When you click the little carrot, you can tilt it down to see what's in the group. To rename it from group one, you double click and we're going to name this one skin. Hide the top layer by clicking the eye and select the bottom of that group layer by clicking on the layer. We're going to go up to filter, go to blur, surface blur, and this is going to start to look crazy, but just trust the process. Um, so I've got my radius at 53, that's fine, threshold at 35, so just kind of, I mean, you can, it's going to look crazy no matter what you do, and you, it kind of needs to look crazy at this point because you're smoothing out the skin. So um, I'm just going to go to 50, just a good round number, and this one I'll go to uh, 25. Okay, and then I'm going to click OK. All right, so there it is. Not done yet. I know it looks crazy. And then we're going to click the eye to reveal this top layer and click on the top layer to select it. And we're going to go to into blending modes and go to linear light. Make sure it says linear light. Don't click linear dodge by accident. Linear light. And then we're going to change the opacity on this layer to about, we'll do 65. So there it is at 65. And then um, we're going to go back to filter, other, and do high pass. For this one, you want the numbers. Like I have it at 2.7 right now. I'm going to go down. Actually, I'm going to do 1.8. But what you're looking for here is that when you zoom out, you can just barely see this outline of area. So I can see the curve of my cheek. I can see the outline of my teeth and my eyes. So 1.8 looks good for mine. So I'm going to click OK. So there I've got this part sort of done. It's the kind of laying the foundation for what we're going to do next. So next we're going to click onto the group layer where it says skin so that no layers are selected, but the group itself is. And then we're going to go up to layer, go to layer mask, hide all. So this basically just put a black layer. So it's hiding everything in that group. And then I'm going to go to channels. And we have this extra, we've got the red, green, and blue, but then since we're on a mask, we've got skin masks here. And we're gonna click the eye and that puts a red overlay. And what this does is helps us see what we're doing a little bit better. So your brush size needs to be sort of large. So you can use your bracket keys, right makes it larger, left makes it smaller. You wanna go fairly large, not too large. And then you want the edges to be soft. So maybe like around, I've got mine at 11. So somewhere around in there. And you want to go around your face I'll press D to go to default swatches um, and then press X to switch. So when you press X, it flip flops the swatches. So you want to go around your face and you want to avoid your hair, your eyes, your nose and your mouth or your nostrils rather and your mouth. So what this is going to end up look like is or looking like is like when you if you do like a facial mask at home and you don't obviously don't want any in your eyes on your nostrils or on your lips. So you want to go over your whole face. You can change, make sure you change the brush size as you go so that it fits in certain areas. All right, so I'm going to do this and you do the same to yours. Okay, so your face should look something like that. 
Um, make sure that you zoom in close as needed so that you can get everything accurately done. Take the time to do it right. And once it looks like, once you've got that part done, you're gonna click on the eye to hide, the, unselect that mask so you can't see that red overlay anymore. Click back to layers. And then now you can see, basically what we did is we took off that like crazy blur texture. We took it off of our eyes, um, nose, like the bottom of our nose or nostrils and our mouth. So this looks almost like we have too much makeup caked on at this point. So you can change that by going, by still being on this group layer. And then you wanna change the opacity down because this is like opacity at zero, that's where we started. And then you can like bring it up slowly to get it to where you want. So you don't wanna go over overdo it. Um, and when we're kind of somewhere in between, you probably will still see some blemishes on the skin. Like you can still see like my wrinkles on my forehead um, and things like that. Um, so that's okay, we're gonna fix that in a little bit. So get that about to where you think you want it. I think that's still almost like too much. So maybe about in there-ish, okay, there we go. Um, so like you, I can see this red spot on my chin right here. I can see the wrinkles on my forehead. So we're going to fix that in just a second. So the next thing we're going to do though, actually we'll go ahead and fix those. So now that we have the skin done, we're going to go to our layer zero and we're going to double click because we have this smart layer. When we double click, it opens up this extra tab of our image. And this one, of course, you don't see any of the editing. So we're going to get to know this tool right here where it says, um, if you hold it down, all these things pop up. Spot healing brush, healing brush tool, patch tool, content aware, and red eye tool. So red eye tool gets rid of red eye if you happen to have that. Um, content aware move, it will switch it and then kind of blend it in. Patch tool will help patch areas. Healing brush is what we're going to use, or healing brush will, um, we'll get to that. And then spot healing brush is what we're going to start with. So click on spot healing brush. And you have the same choices as a paintbrush. So we've got the hardness and we've got the size. So for hardness, we want it to be really soft because you just don't want to see any like hard lines around any area that you're trying to fix. Um, and you want to change the brush size and you can use your brackets. You want it to be a little bit bigger than the area that you're fixing. So like to fix this red spot, I'm going to go to about that size and then I just click and it will hide it. And what it does is it takes the information around and it kind of averages it out. So Photoshop does its best at figuring this out but it's not always perfect so just keep that in mind so like i can see these little wrinkles here these are my what in the world are you doing wrinkles um and i'm just going to click those to hide those and then i can see these lines on my forehead so if you notice i'm do i was doing like one click here to like hide it you can do like a strip by clicking and dragging and that generally works pretty well sometimes it gets a little funky um so just kind of decide what works best I can try to patch up this area. That looks kind of weird. So I'm going to command option Z to undo that. Um, what you, so that's a spot healing brush that gets rid of like little dot blemishes or like I showed you earlier wrinkles. So we can get rid of anything with that um, and that fits in that category. Then we're going to go back here and this time we're going to do the healing brush tool. And when you click once, it pops up with this message that says option click to define a source point to be used to repair the image. So I'm going to click OK. And what I have to do is get my brush the size I want it. And I want to make sure my hardness is all the way down to zero for this one. And, um, and what I have to do is hold down option. And when you do that, it puts this little like crosshairs up and that shows me where I'm going to, where the brush is going to get the information of from to cover up the area that I want to cover up. So I'm going to try to like average out these lines here. So I'm going to click right here. And then when I go here, you can see that little plus sign is showing where it's getting the information from. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So doing this is really pretty cool. Um, but you have to pay attention to where that little plus sign is grabbing from. So let's say like up here, I wanted to cover up an area and I'm going to pull the color from my cheek. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to option click here. But when I go up here, watch where that plus sign goes. When I go up too high, it starts to, I'm gonna try that again. If I go here, option click. If I go up too high, it paints another eye. Cause see where that plus sign is? It's just gonna like paint whatever is in that area over what I'm doing. So you have to be aware of where that's pulling from in order to use it. So it's a really awesome tool. You just have to pay closer attention than you do with the one that's the spot healing brush tool. The patch tool is another way that I could have I could have used of, to get rid of these lines. So what you do with this one is you select an area and when you move it, it like replaces that outline with wherever you drag this to. So I can pop that there 
and it replaces it with that. All right. Um, so same thing with this one. Let's say I wanted to like cover up this um, glare on my nose right here. So when I move this, if I go over my eye, <laughs> it's going to put like my pupil on by the end of my nose. So um, just you have to just like pay attention to where you're pulling from in order to successfully do those. So like you can get rid of this, I can get rid of that highlight on my cheek. Maybe I want to pull from this side over here. I don't know. Um, but so you can play with how those work. Um, all right, so we've got the patch, we use the patch tool, the spot healing brush is just one click, and then the healing brush is option click to decide where it's pulling from to get the information. So once you have your image edited, so you've hidden any um, blemishes or uneven tones that way, click Command S to save. And then you're gonna X out of that layer. And now you can look at this and I've gotten rid of like the wrinkles on my forehead and I've kind of covered up those dark areas under my eyes. I got rid of some blemishes down here. All right, so now we're gonna brighten up the eyes. So I'm gonna click on just, I'm not really, I don't have to be on any specific layer for this, but what I wanna do is make a new group. So I'm just gonna click that and I wanna double click this and this is gonna be my eye layer. I'm gonna brighten up my eyes, so eyes. And then I wanna to go to layer, vector mask, hide all. And I'm gonna to go to channel, click on the eyes mask. I wanna get my paintbrush and I'm gonna change the hardness on this one to a little bit harder because all I wanna do on this one is select the colored area of my eyes. And those do have sort of a hard edge. So I'm gonna go around these, around my irises and get just that color part. And I wanna do this to my other eye as well. All right, now once you have your eyes selected, unclick the eye from the channel, go back to layers, zoom out so you can see both eyes. And I'm gonna go up to layer, new layer adjustment. I'm gonna start with brightness and contrast. And I'm just gonna overall brighten my eyes a little bit. I wanna increase the contrast between the darkness of my pupils and the iris of my, the color of part of my eyes. And then I wanna go up here and I'm gonna do another one. And this one I'm gonna do, oops, hue saturation. Click okay. And this one, I'm gonna increase the saturation, which is really just like making the color of my, that my eyes already are more intense. You could also change the hue here by moving the hue slider up or down. If you click on colorize, that gives you, oops, colorize, that gives you almost like more of like an overlay of your eyes of color so that it's almost like more like all over. So when you <laughs> zoom out, you can see like what effect that has. Um, I just want mine to be like they were, but brighter. So I'm going to uncheck colorize and I'm going to put this at zero. Um, so there's my eyes. Now with that same concept of making a blank group and then um, putting the mask on it and doing a layer adjustment, how can you brighten up your teeth or change the color of your hair? Or maybe you even want to like add makeup to your face. Um, See if you can figure that out, and I'll probably also make a specific tutorial for it, but see what you can figure out. So there we have it. That is smoothing the skin, hiding blemishes, brightening the eyes. Um, can't wait to see what you create. All right, happy editing. Bye.